Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Mona Razulza Day joining us here, our Reiki master and friend, and of course, our company's Mystical Ray Healing from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. Welcome back. How are you doing? Hey, thanks for having me. Well, pleasure to have you back here today. Would you mind telling us a little bit about Mystical Ray and the types of services you offer? Of course, yes. Um, so I'm a Reiki master specializing in different natural healing modalities such as sound healing, Reiki, tarot, and all forms of meditation and mindfulness. So yoga, breath work. Um, I like to heal everything naturally with herbs and remedies and empower my clients to self-heal themselves as well. So everything at Mystical Ray Healing is revolving around natural modalities of healing. Beautiful. Well, thank you. Pleasure to having you back. And it's Mystical Ray Healing, M-Y-S-T-I-C-A-L-R-E-I-H-E-A-L-I-N-G.com. So from the uh, healing you do with the sound healing, the Reiki and Combining, you mentioned science with spirituality. You're here to help us and serve us. <laughs> Tell us uh, some of the things you want to discuss for today. Um, I wanted to go over meditation, having a ritual or um, a routine of mindfulness, gratitude, and the importance of that and how it sets the tone for your day or how you can end your day on a positive note. Um, whether you choose to do it in the mornings or in the evenings, but having that ritual and that routine of meditation, of writing in a journal, and the importance of how it transforms your life. And you write in a journal every day? For how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it for at least eight years now, religiously. Um, if I miss a day, I feel like weird. Um, so I always start with a gratitude list. First thing when I wake up, the 20 minutes when we first wake up, we're still in alpha, alpha wave. So your subconscious is very alert and your ego is the sleep. So you're still really able to tap into your higher self, into the higher dimensions. If you want to manifest or meditate, this is the perfect time to do it as your subconscious is very, very awake and still functioning much more than your ego is. So it's able to absorb things at a much rapid speed, really take it all in and receive in the way that we need to. Whereas the rest of the day, we kind of go back into our programmings, into our conditioning, our ego comes into play. So we're not as responsive as when we are, when we first wake up, that 20 minutes is a golden time to for being mindful. And how long does it take a day to journal? Just curious. Um, it really depends. So I would recommend if you've never journaled, picking five things that you're grateful for. So really simple, really easy. If you're not someone that loves writing, I love writing. I'm writing all the time. So for me, my writing sometimes is three pages long. I'll write in the morning. So I'll write affirmations. I'll write a gratitude list and what I want my day to look like. But if you're just starting out and you want something simple, even picking five things like I woke up today, I'm happy and healthy. Um, I have a roof over my head. The sun is shining. It could be the simplest things. But when you live in a state of gratitude and that's how you begin your day, you attract so many more things to be grateful for. So the universe is always responding to your frequency. And if you're operating at a frequency of gratitude, love, appreciation, the universe is going to keep representing you with things to be more grateful for, to be more appreciative of. So at any time, even if you don't start a gratitude list, if you're out and you come across abundance, let's go, you go somewhere and you come across a sale of something that you really wanted, saying out loud, like, thank you, universe, lovely that I'm getting a discount today. Look at this abundance coming in. The rest of the day, you're going to see that there's going to be more things given to you because the universe loves, loves gratitude. And when we operate from that frequency, we are given so much without even asking. All we have to do is say, thank you. And the practice of this can be so beneficial, right? We're calling this the practice of 
mindfulness, which you want to kind of teach us a little bit more about today, right? Yes. So when we talk about meditation, so many people get freaked out because they think in meditation, you shouldn't think about anything. It should be absolute silence. And that's not how it goes for many. I mean, it's taken me years to train my brain not to have thoughts, to be very still where everything is flowing. But if you're not that person, meditation could be simple as going out for a walk and listening to music. It could be sitting with... um mantras and listening to that it's anything that brings you into the present moment where you are just focused on what is not in the past not in the future but in this present moment where there's nothing but what you are doing in that moment so if you can't sit there and meditate i highly recommend starting out with music it is the easiest way Everybody gets lost in music. If it is something you love, I recommend going for walks and listening to music and tuning into the lyrics, the beat. How does it make you feel when you're hearing the lyrics? What does the beat make you want to do? Does it make you want to dance? Does it make you want to move? Just becoming one with music, that is a wonderful form of meditation that is very easy for beginners. Also, it could be yoga. Yoga is a wonderful way of moving the body, but slowing down the mind and being present in that moment while allowing the breath work to do its job of circulating the energy and your body doing the different movements and your mind being still. So there's many different techniques and ways we can meditate without just sitting. So if anybody has a hard time with that, I highly recommend taking up different ways of meditation until you do come to that place where sitting still with your thoughts is comfortable. And by the way, if we are just tuning in mystical ray healing, uh, you offer these types of services uh, virtually, right? So as we become more aware of our um, ourselves, our bodies, our wants, our needs, uh, with the process of mindfulness, you're telling us that we could really kind of, is it the word attract? Is it kind of create, manifest, a all better life in a sense yeah okay I'm yeah. <laughs> 100% because we are always co-creating we are always manifesting whether it's negative or positive we are always manifesting with our thoughts our actions and our words that we speak so let's say somebody says oh I, I'm going out I hope this doesn't happen guess what's going to happen the thing they hope that didn't happen because now they've put it out there The universe doesn't speak English and it doesn't pick up, oh, I hope it doesn't happen. It just says, oh, Jill is going out and this is what she's thinking about. So let's bring this to her because it's a train of thought. So it's so important when we become mindful, we go inward. We become aware of our self-talk. Is it negative? Is it positive? We become aware of all that's happening around us and the way we are co-creating with source. Um, We all have such immense power um, as humans. We are a speck of source in human form. I think I don't think that's something small. We are grand, we're full of potential, and we're always manifesting. Um, It's just how we choose to do it. Many think of all the things they don't want to happen, and therefore focused on avoiding that, that they attract it, unfortunately. And they don't catch on that, oh, I keep constantly focusing on this. That's why I'm attracting it. Whereas when you do practice mindfulness, after some time, when you do become very in touch with yourself, your energy, how you operate, your um, self-talk and how you're co-creating, you realize everything in your life is a manifestation of dreams you've had, wishes you've made, thoughts you've had, and words you've spoken throughout the years. So we can always change that in an instant when we become aware that we have that power and mindfulness is what allows us to tap into that power when we're running around with thoughts and scattered minds and anxious energy we can't anchor anything in Um, so it's really really important to allow even 20 minutes of our time to be still to be mindful to be in touch with ourselves to kind of see what we want to attract. Um, What kind of energy are we in today? Are we feeling great? Are we feeling lower vibrational? 
if you are, there's different ways of coming out of that vibration. But when you are unaware of your own frequency, you're just going to be open to everything, good and bad. So again, mindfulness goes back to realizing your own frequency and how you're operating. And that's where you hold all of your power in creating your reality. And what are some of the types of things you can help people create and manifest? Could you share some of the benefits of mystical right healing personally? Yes. 100%. So for anybody that is interested in attracting more abundance and living in an abundant state of mind, um, kind of co-creating and manifesting without blockages or resistance, I would recommend energy work because you are energy in human form. Your source is energy. Um, you're not a physical being first. You're first energy, then a physical being. So when we start working with that energy source, we're able to tap into the universal energy because that's where we are connected at is that soul level. Um, so by doing Reiki, by doing sound healing, by doing tarot, getting a reading, or any sort of definition work at home yourself, um, working with the full moon, the new moon, um, different phases of the moon and the planets of what's going on around us. Let's say it's Mercury retrograde. You're being taught to go inward and see how you communicate and how you show up in the world. All of these things play a part in how we are in the outer world and how we operate. So if you tap into the energy world and you work with your frequency on that level, you're able to remove blockages where you're not able to do it only in the physical. Um, if there's resistance or blockages in your chakras, whatever you do in the physical world, let's say you're doing yoga and you're eating right, that's still not going to help you with your chakras because you're not getting it where you need. It's underneath the surface at a soul level. So that's when um, more work is required and you, it's important to become aware of energy work and how it benefits us. The way I work with my clients is getting underneath the surface um, in healing sessions. We always tap into past lives, ancestral karma, any DNA um, trauma that there is, because these are all blockages that prevent us from being in our full potential, in our full power. Every single one of us, because of our lineage, our ancestors, our family, we have some sort of trauma and karma in our DNAs that need to be cleared because our, the older generation was not able to do it. They didn't have the resources or the means. I mean, 50 years ago, all the stuff we talk about now wasn't really big. Nobody was practicing Reiki in the sense that they are. Uh, tarot cards were very woohoo and like still very unknown. People were scared. Um, but now we have all those resources uh, in very open ways. Everybody is really practicing spirituality in many different ways, combining it with um, science and the physical body and blending them. So they were operating as whole humans, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all connected as one. And right now that it is the time to truly tap into those resources that we have so abundantly all around the world. I mean, we have Zoom where we can connect to somewhere across the country and have um, practices, have la lessons, classes, um, healing sessions. It, we're not restricted. The only restriction and blockages we have is ourselves and when we don't do the work. So it all goes back again to self. All right. And remind us how we can contact you again, please. Sure. The easiest way is my website, Mystical Ray, spelled R-E-I, healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G.com. My phone number is on there. My email is on there. But you can reach me at 604-789-0256. And you can book online through Zoom and in person. Either way, energy work doesn't require you to be in person. It can all be done over Zoom as well. All right. Well, besides manifestation, mindfulness, uh, I know 
you help people. You mentioned chakras with healing. Um, what other area in particular did you want to kind of address for today uh, with the work you do? Yes, I wanted to address sort of, I wanted to talk about rituals. Um, I know when I say rituals, many people don't know what I'm talking about or they've never had rituals in their life. Rituals are routines and practices um, that we implement in our day, sort of like journaling, but also saging. Like it's very, very important to cleanse your home, to cleanse your body. If people don't already work with sage, I highly recommend um, cleansing your home each day with sage so we don't absorb the energy. And where, where do you get sage from, by the way? Just oh, curious. Uh of course. So you can get it at any store that sells crystals, any metaphysical store. They always have it. Um, I don't recommend ordering online because you should know where it's sourced from. Um, if it's not sourced from a great place, you're now burning all that energy in your home. So go into a place, get it from a place where you like the energy and bring that into your home, um, working with different elements. So the importance of water as well. I really, really am being guided right now to work with my clients and to bring awareness of water. We are 60% water in our bodies and water absorbs everything. And people don't realize by drinking water that's been sitting out in, let's say you go somewhere and there's lots of tension and you have a glass of water, that glass of water has now absorbed all that tension in that room. And if you drink it, guess what you're becoming? All that tension, anxiety that has been absorbed in that water. It is now running throughout your entire system. And if you're someone that's unaware, you're going to be like, oh, let's say you were feeling great. And now you've stepped into this environment and drank that water. You're full of anxiety. You're feeling tension, unease. Being mindful of water, the, that element is so, so important. We are a huge part of that element and the fact that we don't work with it so intentionally boggles my mind people um tap water example it's full of chemicals and people think they take a shower and they're cleansing yes you are but you're also absorbing all of the chemicals in the water that we have the fluoride everything that's not filtered through so it's really important and this is where rituals and mindfulness comes in before stepping into that shower, into that water, asking to be cleansed without any sort of chemicals, um, to purify and cleanse the water before it's come made contact with your body or drinking it, blessing your water before you drink it. So what's going in isn't harmful to your body. Um, fluoride is very, very, um, it's a blocking chemical for the third eye. And that's why a lot of the population of the world is very blind to what's going on. They're not able to see past the stuff that's in the physical world. And the biggest problem is fluoride in our waters. And this is designed for a reason. Um, but I'm really wanting people to be very mindful of what they're putting in their body, what kind of chemicals and how they're going out about their day. Um, every time we implement a ritual or a routine, we're essentially setting ourselves up for success. Um, if you wake up at the same time every morning, um, let's say it's 5 a.m. or 6 a.m., your body instantly becomes in sync with this routine. And it starts um, sort of... Um, serotonin, dopamine, whatever it may be, of restarting your body on like a positive note. When you wake up, you're journaling and the world is asleep. My favorite time to wake up is 5 a.m. It's a magical time. And many people have spoken about this prime time of waking up at 5 a.m. to set goals and how it transforms your life. And I can attest to that, that it is so, so powerful um there's something magical about that hour when we wake up and we manifest and we write in our journal and then when you go about your day you're full of energy versus being drained if you are someone that sleeps in till noon um you're not going to have that life force energy 
you're going to be more foggy headed, uh, cloudy, um, drained. So it's really, really, really important to have some sort of routine, even if it's 10 minutes of your day to sort of set the tone for your day. I can't stress this enough um, for anybody that's trying to bring more money into their life, trying to become more successful in their business. There are certain things we need to implement within ourselves to get that result in this physical world. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing this. We still have some time left here. Six minutes to be exact. Yeah, uh, I just want to make sure, yeah, we're on course to covering everything that you wanted to address for today. Did and, you have any questions or shall I just go on? Well, I, I'm just I'm just curious about you. I mean, uh, for those that may not know, how did you get into this and know you had this gift of, you know, being so um, spiritual and connected in a sense? So I've always been connected ever since I was a child, but um, I kind of got lost along my journey. I spent many years numbing my gifts and not wanting to feel. Um, then when I was about 28 years old, I stopped drinking, I stopped um, using drugs, and I turned all my experiences into power. So everything I'd been through, I now realize I'm helping everyone that's going through similar things as myself. And the first time I meditated, um, I cried immensely. And it was to an OM meditation. And OM is the first sound of the universe. So when you meditate with OM, you're essentially connecting with energy source that's universal. So it was like a homecoming to me. And that feeling I've never forgotten. It became very addictive to me. So I meditated religiously um, for now the past eight years or yes eight years and if I miss even one day I don't feel like myself um it's become that important to me um I got into it because I wanted to get out of the patterns I was in I grew up in a very dysfunctional home um very abusive um very restrictive and I wanted to free myself spiritually, not if not physically. I wanted my mind, my body, my soul to feel peace in a chaotic world. And I only found peace when I was meditating or practicing spiritual practices such as yoga. It was the only time that I felt I had no anxiety. I grew up very, very anxiety-ridden, um, very scattered mind, always rushing to do things like very chaotic. Uh, my energy used to be very, very wild. And that was the only thing that grounded me. And throughout the years, I've found that it's gone to the point where now, essentially, I don't have thoughts in my mind. The only thoughts I have are like, oh, breaking down synchronicities, um, breaking down astrology things as I see it. So it's come to a place where I can truly say everything I think, I instantly manifest because I'm so aware of my energy, how it's operating, what frequency it's at, and what I'm drawing in. And once we tap into that, that's my whole mission at Mystical Ray Healing. I want every single human to be able to tap into their power and to manifest their best life, because that's what we came on earth to do, is to create heaven on earth, to show people, to show everyone that as humans, we hold such power. What we create in the mind, we can create in real life. So beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> wow. wow. Um, and thank you for sharing that and being so open. I think a lot of us have had traumatic childhoods, myself included. So dysfunctional to say the least, but it also taught me a lot. And it makes me the person who I am today, which is very positive, very happy. And, you know, it's it's... Sometimes it takes that to come from hardship to learn how uh, a different way life is better and to be thankful and grateful for that because you've seen both sides. So, yes. um, yeah, yeah. A um, uh, few minutes left. What else do you want us to know about the healing work you do and have done? Um, well, the healing work I do is um, my Reiki is actually quite different than traditional Japanese Reiki. If anybody is interested, it's Seiken Mi, which is originated from Egypt. And then it's um, the feminine side of Reiki, where traditional Reiki is mostly masculine, the one that's originated from Japan. I combine the both. 
So when you combine both energies, um, masculine and feminine, you're healing at a very, very deep level. So really going underneath all of the layers. So the mental, emotional, astral, physical body and manipulating the energy at source level. So if anybody is truly interested in transforming their life, uplifting their spirit, raising their frequency and vibration. So you are able to manifest if you're having problems manifesting and making your dreams come to life. I highly recommend booking a session, just an initial session to see the difference you feel. Cause even after one session, it's a huge difference. Uh, it's every single one of my clients has always left with much more clarity um, deeper connection to themselves and everything around them. So if you're even remotely interested in energy healing, pick up the phone today. Let's talk. Let's have an initial conversation about what's going on. And I promise you, you will feel a world of difference. Wonderful. How can we call you? Could you share the phone number and all the 100%. contact information? Thank you. You can reach me at 604-789-0256 or go on my website, mysticalraythealing.com, which is M-Y-S-T-I-C-A-L, Ray, R-E-I, healing, H-E-A-L-I-N-G.com. All my services are on there and my information is also on there. Thank you again. Pleasure having you here. Great to see yeah. you here oh. alive on the Zoom as well. For those of you just on the radio side, I get to see your beautiful face today. Um, thank you today. It's good catching up. And uh, thank you for the discussion and for doing what you do. Oh, thank you, Jill, for having me. It's lovely connecting with you again. Same here. Have a fantastic day. Thanks again. Thanks and to all of our listeners and viewers, stay tuned. More of the show's coming right up. Bye-bye. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.